sister truth. It's true. It's so true. I was like, God damn it. But yesterday was in my head. It was just, it was, it was, I lit a fire under my, 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 my thinking process about getting the TV yesterday. Like it went from like, I should really get a new TV soon to like, God damn it. I'm missing out on deals. Like these deals are not going to be around forever. And I just had to pull the trigger. I just had Sometimes to. you got to pull the trigger. I mean, and that, and I can, that can mean a lot of different things. You know right, what I mean? Right, yeah. Alec? <laughs> <laughs> and on that note welcome to the steph truth everyone i am bob last time here with the illustrious scott castle nova it's been a little Hello. while scott uh it's good to it's good to be on camera it's good to be working again uh, uh i know we've taken some time off uh but i'm happy to be back how are things things are uh things are really good thanks for asking buddy in fact I'm, I'm actually going to start this the right way because I'm a little bit dry. There you go. You're doing it. I'm going to get a nice little drink of my whiskey sour. I feel like I have a little bit extra sour in my whiskey. Interesting. So I, have, I have a little bit of extra whiskey in my sour. That's I good. Have, I have that too. But, uh, you know, I was really looking forward to today's drink since yesterday. I was just like, I really want a whiskey sour, but I will wait. We'll oh, I, just, I was just going to say, so you were really wanting one and you just like you went ahead and had some last night, but you didn't have any last night. I didn't. I just had a couple shots of whiskey and played some some Call of Duty by myself because that's all you can do with Call of Duty anymore. Well, this <laughs> this is true. I was wondering last night why I didn't get more pings from you. Um, what I, I was I was busy watching season three of you. I don't think you've watched even season one or two. Um this PSA for everybody out there. If you haven't watched you on Netflix, it's, it's phenomenal. It's a great show, but I was balls deep in that, but then I was ready to play. And I noticed that nobody was hitting me up, but now I know why now I know why. Yeah. I mean, literally. Um, me and uh, our mutual friend, Dave, uh, were, were trying to play and we were troubleshooting like network and trying to get it to work literally for like three or four hours. It's all right. Never hey, played you, once together. Never. It never worked. So I'm glad that they rushed the release to beat the other games because now it's out there and they're making money and they can just do these patch updates when they see fit. You know Call what I mean? Duty, get your new multiplayer shooter now. Oh, cool. Multiplayer. Let's play well, multiplayer. Well, the multiplayer part doesn't work. Oh, what, what is it you say you do here then? <laughs> it's like, well, maybe maybe on zombies and sometimes, but you'll get kicked out every other round. No big deal. Anyways, we can tisk. tisk. We can suck each other's dicks about Call of Duty a little bit later here. I want to get right into Mr. Aaron Rodgers here. Um, I'm in the football world, it kind of fucked up one of our fantasy leagues. I'll tell you that because I have Aaron Rodgers starting, but that's okay. I started Carson Wentz, and you know what? He did he a damn out. good. Yeah, he did a damn good job on Thursday night. So I'm okay with that. But Jesus Christ, um, let's just talk about this right now because one, we talked about it earlier this week. It's interesting to me. I don't, and, and just in case anybody doesn't know, because probably not everybody's glued to the TV around sports like Bob and I, but uh, Aaron Rodgers tested positive for COVID, which doesn't really sound like a huge deal. Players test positive for COVID here and there, even breakthrough cases. So they, even that's not unheard of. But what happened here is he tested positive for COVID and they figured out after doing a little bit of digging, oh, Aaron Rodgers is not vaccinated, although He's been acting like he's vaccinated, especially when he said he was immunized, which, again, is a really interesting choice of words when people ask you if you're vaccinated back at a press release um, in August and just decided that my thoughts, Bob, is he's just too cool for school. He's stronger than covid. He's he's elite. You know what I mean? He's an elite quarterback. He's an elite person. He's better than everybody else. I feel that's more the case than him being a uh, anti-vaxxer. What are your thoughts, though, buddy? So my thoughts are more so on, you know, the, the employer side of this. Um, if I were running the Packers, I'd be so fucking mad, right? Because first off, you're, you're, you're putting at risk our bottom line because now we can, you know, start losing games uh, because a, a, lot of the, a lot of the money and effort goes into him playing. That, that's the plan right and then it's about all the other players that he's putting at risk right and all the other assets that the company has to profit on and that's let's just call it what it is that's what players are to a gm their assets to make profitability you know so to make you profitable so 
So he's he's putting the whole organization at risk over some weird, you know, political thing. Uh, and if and if he's not going to be vaccinated, that's okay. You, you know, this isn't you know this isn't fucking you know Russia or some shit. You can not get vaccinated if you want. Uh, but you to not tell your employer who pays you like forty million dollars a year is pretty pretty shitty to do especially when you've got you know 50 some other guys in the roster a bunch of training staff uh, right down to the fucking cleaning staff of the stadium you know you're you're putting so many lives at risk because of because of what you want and that's fine but they should at least know that and you should have the common courtesy to tell them hey i'm not vaxxed so you should probably take that uh, into account when you're, you know, around me or you're doing your thing and you should be able to assess and manage your own risk. And I'm not just going to sneak it and throw wrenches in everyone else's risk management of this disease. Well, and, and you, you nailed it right there. And when I'm thinking about it too, it really speaks a testament to, to really who Rogers is and his character, uh, honestly. And, and I don't want to, I'm not even taking this politically. I want to wash that away for a minute and just realize vaxxed anti-vaxxed you know all the political shit behind it on each side of the table it doesn't really even matter at the end of the day what's interesting to me is one you just said it look dude if you don't if you don't believe in getting this vaccine because you have you've done a lot of research i mean again you got to kind of watch that interview with uh, your uh, your backdrop there because he basically sounds like a mouthpiece from joe rogan's podcast like right now like what he says recently about getting covid and then taping ivermectin and monoclonal antibodies and how if you're super super healthy you do all the research you shouldn't necessarily get it and you're going to have stronger stronger antibodies naturally if you fight the disease and get over it he's kind of like on that narrative right now but what's so interesting like you mentioned that's really fine if you did it from the get-go. Before the season, if Rodgers took a stance publicly and said, hey, man, I've done my research. I'm not going to get the vaccine. You guys should understand why. Maybe maybe he'd have my, myself or other people included would actually get behind and be like, hey, you know what? He's he doesn't believe in it, but he's got his reasons. He, he came out and said it. He's a, he's a, you know, he's a he's a good guy, whatever. We know where we stand, um, but it's not the case. He kind of like flew under the radar and tried to hide it and then made this dramatic pivot of being like a freedom advocate like right now. You know what I mean? So it, it, it's. It's very low class in my in my uh, in my eyes there, and it's very disrespectful not only to his employer, but you talked about it too, his sponsors and and the NFL in general. Like, let's face it, man, a, a big reason why a lot of people are tuning into the NFL this season, which is not unique to this season, is watching Aaron Rodgers and a couple other elite players. Right? Of course, he's the reigning MVP. Yeah, yeah. So my thing is. Again, it speaks to his lower character, and I kind of assumed he was a little bit of a douchebag because, you know, these elite quarterbacks or whatever, they get paid millions and millions of dollars, probably get a chip on their shoulder. Even if they don't come out of the gate that way, they develop this kind of attitude, but it it just shines right now. You know what I mean? Like we talked about earlier, I don't think he's technically an anti-vaxxer. I think he's better than, he thinks he's better than the disease. He can't get it. He's above it. And I think that's why he also hit it too. Cause he's like, you know what? I'm Aaron Rodgers. I'm not even going to get COVID because COVID's a little bitch and I'm not a little bitch. And that's interesting to me because here we are, you know what I mean? It caught up with him. Well, and the interesting thing to me about the vaccine, is just, um, maybe it's cause he's at the end of his career and he's made most of the money he's going to make, uh, off of salary from the NFL. He doesn't care so much, but, um, I've read plenty of stories about Olympians that have gotten it. Uh, even if they didn't make the Olympics, the people that went to the trials, you know, I've read, I've read two or three stories about people that have gotten it, professional athletes and they can no longer perform and even do their sport anymore because of the long haul lung damage that COVID did mm-hmm. to them, mm-hmm. you know, and mm-hmm. they had to like leave their sport. So to me as a professional athlete, it seems like a lot of risk. Uh, to, to risk something that can affect your, your cardio pulmonary system uh, as a, a finely tuned athlete like that, you know, unless you're like a golfer or a baseball player, but if you're like a real athlete, like it would seem that, <laughs> that, that you would want to like, look out for your, your, you know, earning potential in your career and do that risk management. And it seems like not only was he douchebaggery with the risk of other people to manage and hiding it, he was also douchebaggery to himself and managing his own risk. Yeah. Again, uh, everyone has the right to do it. I just think that is if you're looking at it from a pure black and white risk man- management perspective, I think anything from the vaccine would f- be far less than a potential long haul COVID symptom if I were in the NFL. Right. 
Right. And that, and this is the thing you, you just said it now, but again, to back up, if he would have came out of the gate and said, look, I'm not comfortable with the, my perceived level of risk by taking one of these vaccines. I just don't think it's worth it because of the risk I've assessed from doing my research. Great, Aaron. That's cool, dude. Right out of the gate. Now go back to your fucking, you know, your room and get on the zoom meeting with the rest of the team. You know what I mean? Like, right. like seriously, like quit acting like you already got vaccinated that's the biggest thing here i have no problem with him being vaccine hesitant i got no problem at all it's very simply that he flew under the radar and just slapped everybody in the face purposely because again he didn't think that the risk to everybody else is serious enough which is kind of a double standard there and a little bit hypocritical right he won't take the vaccine because of all this risk but he's okay you know, bringing all the risk that comes with being unvaccinated to everybody else around him that doesn't know that he's unvaccinated, which again, well, you could come up and say though, Bob, well, the players that are actually vaccinated have nothing to worry about because they're vaccinated. Okay. Kind of true. But then you still drive up the likelihood of transmission severity. And then there's a group of people that are high risk, for instance, Ron Rivera, you know what I mean? That's a cancer survivor and stuff like that. It doesn't matter. Like if he's shaking hands or hugging him after kicking the shit out of the Redskins a couple of weeks ago, you know, and he's at a higher risk of catching the virus again than if Aaron Rodgers was vaccinated and doing the same thing. So again, it's just that blatant disregard of the risk he's putting everybody else at while he's again on his high horse right now of being like the guy that studies and, and, you know, he's, he's, he's behind the science and all this shit. You know, if you saw that interview, it's just, it's almost laughable right now that he did this like 180 after everybody finds out. about. Yeah. It. So there's a couple of things about the whole Aaron Rodgers thing, right? Is it's okay for him to risk other people's lives and, and for him not to risk his own because in the end, they're not Aaron Rodgers. Exactly. So, right? <laughs> so that's okay. You know, and, He's got to look out for Aaron Rodgers. And I'm sure he says it just like that. I've got to look he, out for Aaron Rodgers. He's like, look, Ron Rivera, you've had your time, bro, but you're not Aaron Rodgers. You're not the rating MVP. Step aside, old man, and join the rest of your compadres on the other side. Why I take, why I, why I control the land of the living for the next couple of years. You I know do I mean? love how loud and how much of a, a, an advocate he is for not getting the vaccine now that he's been caught. Um, <laughs> right. But yet for the last several months, he was quiet as a mouse. And I, I, I've got to assume that that's because he has sponsorships that would have probably dropped him if he was anti-vax about this. Well, and this is, I was talking, I was talking to Jamie earlier. This is where it's, it's, it's a eggshell type reprimanding any kind of consequences or just image wise, even how the NFL deals with this, right? If this was like some backup quarterback or just some, some no name player, it would be much easier to be like, put the kibosh on this right away, reprimand him, charge him a bunch of money, whatever it is. Put your phone on silent, Bob. <laughs> but then it wouldn't be a legit show. People think we're making this shit up. <laughs> they, but, they've come to expect a certain level of, you know, amateurism, okay? Douchebaggery. Um, no, but you know what I mean? Again, this is, and I hate to say it, but. Aaron Rodgers does have still a power play in this position. You know what I mean? What can they really do to him right now without suffering monetarily in general? I mean, so it's interesting. I want to, it's interesting to see how they deal with it. They really haven't dealt with it too much. You know what I mean? They've talked about it. It's on ESPN. They're doing stories, but they're not really pointing the finger at him too heavily. I noticed that it's, it's kind of eggshell ish right now with how they're walking. Well, he's the reigning MVP and he's eight and one. I, know. I mean, you can't do what, much. What are you going to do? Exactly. So literally he could, he could do a lot more and, uh, and get away with it, I think. And I think he knows that to a certain extent, which kind of makes him even more of a douchebag in my mind, just because he's taking advantage of his position. But I, you know what, I take that back. I'd probably do the same thing if I was him, not this process, but just, I mean, taking advantage of my position. You know what I mean? I would probably be sending dick pics to you. You know what I mean? So that's a, <laughs> so, so Jimmy Kimmel ripped Aaron Rodgers um, a couple nights ago. And uh, I, I just want to give you a little bit of a quote. Um, Lay it he, on me, baby. He, he was pretty hardcore about it. He says, Aaron, quote, Aaron is a Karen. That's the reality of the matter. Honestly, the only thing even worse than not getting immunized when you're in close contact with other individuals is letting them believe that you're immunized when you're right? not. It's generally the COVID equivalent of the prophylactic fell off. All right. Oops. I just fell off. I didn't mean for it to. So. Uh, that's 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 the the thoughts there and then 
of course, Aaron Rodgers is trying to, you know, play the the role of the victim here, and and that's even it speaks even more volumes about his lack of character. Yeah, we got to throw in lack of there too. Yeah, he's he's a, he's a victim now. He's in the crosshairs of the woke mob. I understand there's a lot of yes. lies being told around, you know, everywhere. Poor about Aaron Rodgers, he gets to I lead one of 32 NFL franchises in the world, some of the most valuable sports franchises in the world. He has one of the highest salaries of any employee in America, and he we need to feel bad for this guy because he's not because because we're, we're expecting him to like help look out for the people that he's leading on his organization yeah and what's that That's chick's terrible. name again uh, the chick from insurgent oh, and he's dating that oh, chick Sh- too? Sh- shailene woodley yeah you know he's just got a horrible life you know what i mean he's been jumping from olivia mon to her you know what i mean just he's he look. needs to be uh, a victim right now people need to feel sorry for aaron Rodgers. god i really wish people wouldn't be all over him right now i mean jesus christ i need to wear a beanie when i'm inside that's all i'm saying you know what i mean <laughs> so um aaron Rodgers is just i don't know again yeah it's hard to feel bad for him um i don't know i'm just i've always kind of thought he was a little bit flaky to say the least uh and but it's really come out to light here that and full-on douchebaggery i think uh, with this move um i know we all feel passionate about the ways uh, that we we feel but uh you've got to be at least thoughtful and mindful enough to execute uh, your path and it's just like i don't know if it's narcissism or uh, or what but to, to the way that he executed it really just speaks volumes as to how he gives a shit about no one else in his orbit only aaron Rodgers matters and, and that's yeah. that's pretty shitty you know um you know what probably he, you, why he doesn't have more super bowls right he, you know i was just gonna say you know he's not as much of a team player as everybody would like to believe he is with his elite status here and i he kind of reminds me of and and again i want to separate this from po- politics as much as possible because i just think his his distrust and his lying and his deception is very low character and it was reckless. It has nothing to do with right or left. I know us sitting here and like kind of trashing him a little bit could be perceived as us like kind of being part of the quote unquote woke mob. Um, but you know what I mean? Like I, you could, you, I bet you a hundred dollars. Some crazy off the wall, right. Person is just like, these guys are just sucking the fucking left dick right now. They're just sucking the teat of the left. I'm like, no, 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 no. The guy just was just devious and reckless and, and stupid and should have like, just, if he was tough about it, he should just came out and said it right away. I don't want to hear that. I voted for a libertarian last Tuesday. So in, in your, in your face, lefty ass kissers. But you know what I understand, though? I don't know if I'm going to give you 100% of, of a point for that. I might give you a half a point because I, what I understand is you only voted for him because you were upset with the marketing tactics of the Democrat on the ballot. Am I right? There's a Democratic <laughs> pollster, like, literally 201 <laughs> feet from the door with the signs and shit up, and I'm like, fuck that guy. <laughs> have, you know, have some class. I'm going to vote for For real, party. for real. I, I just, I didn't like it, so... <gasps> So that oh was that. my god well you know what let's just go ahead and talk about it here because we just we just wandered right into another topic we were going to mention here but if anybody didn't know it's not nearly as big as when it falls in line with the presidential election but super tuesday was last week huh wasn't it it was kind of like you know better than normal tuesday it was <laughs> I, I don't, it wasn't too super i guess it was in jersey and in and, and virginia yes sort of well, a big deal well, I, we talked about this too. It's interesting to me um, that it's even newsworthy to act surprised and and all this other all these other things. You know, again, it's just like, oh my god, the Democrats. This is a wake up call for the Democrats here. Believe it or not, the other, the only other party that has a really strong base <laughs> <laughs> is getting votes. And then if we're complacent after we get you know voted in the office. They're getting votes we didn't think they were going to get. What do we need to do here? We need to wake up, smack each other in the face. But we talked about this in on, I can't remember which show it was, but it's this extreme, right? I mean, we did because of other extremes. We voted in a lot more liberal lawmakers on the last go around here in 2020. That's what we did. And, and now it's starting to swing the other way and people are appreciative of when the when the pendulum was like kind of in the middle and swinging back but now they're also seeing some 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 things and and feeling the effects and the products of some left policies that they don't like so what are they doing they're starting to vote the other way again bob is this like a nasty vicious cycle that is ever going to end do you ever see an end to this or i mean there's no, two it's parties been going so... on for like a hundred years uh, yeah it's... it's go ahead 
it's every midterm of the elected president, the party of the elected president loses a substantial amount of seats in both the Senate and the House. Everyone does. It's because everyone, first, the turnout's not as big as to get mm-hmm. that that president in. Even though in the 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 system of our you know republic, the presidency is only a third. <laughs> yeah. They don't really have a ton of power. I mean, but but anyway. And then two years after the president comes in. Always the opposite party always gets a lot of momentum and, and gets in spots because all those people that came in don't come in. And then it, and it, and it uh, rejuvenates the opposite party then to actually come in in the midterms while the other people feel like, well, we got our guy and we're good now. And, and it happens every single time. I got a theory here, too. I, I just said it, but I'm going to backtrack a little bit here. Um, you know, I'd mentioned like maybe, you know, they get voted in, they get lazy, they get complacent and the other team starts to get, you know, more, more of a team, right. More of a team base and starts pulling people over. I don't think that's really the case. Do you know what I think really happens is because we have this extreme pendulum swing back and forth, left to right, every two years, every four years, two years, doesn't really matter. What happens I think is the other team, they got to get the other team out of office, right? Because people are just so enraged about what's going on with the extreme politics of the moment, right? So what they do is they make a shitload of promises that rightfully so they cannot follow through on, but they make all these promises. And then when they get voted in, it's not that they're getting lazy, but they realize, well, I made all these promises that I can't fulfill, but that's okay. I'm in office now, but as a lens of the American people, they're like, Hey, you said you were going to do all this shit. You're not doing anything. I'm like, no, no, no. I am doing stuff. But what I told you I was going to do is not realistic to get done. in the time frame we laid out, I just said it. So you would vote me in. But obviously this is all not said, right? It's unspoken. And that's why I think it's swinging back forth. There's a lot of promises to get on there and get in. And then they're like, well, you know, you voted me in already. I'm going to do what I can, but I, I can't really do everything I said I was going to do. What are you crazy? That's, I'm not Superman. I'm just a politician. I take weekends and a lot of holidays off. So I don't know. I, that's what I think happened, Bob. Yeah. In fact, I read an article. I was actually thumbing through it as you were talking there to try to find it. I, I don't think I can find it right now, but I read an article from a Democratic um, Congresswoman from Virginia, I think it was. Let's just say Virginia. I want to say it was Virginia. Um, Let's just say. But she's from a, you know, a moderate, even a typically a red district, right? But she won because she's a moderate Democrat, and that's a thing sometimes. And uh, <laughs> And so she said, um, you know, with the the agenda, right, she said people didn't vote for Biden to be FDR. Like, we don't need a ton of help, you know, uh, with a a massive, you know, New Deal type plan in America. That's not why Biden's the president. She said Biden's the president because they just wanted to get rid of the chaos and kind of normalize things out, you know, and now there's this kind of uber agenda that a lot of people don't agree with the spending of this new infrastructure bill um maybe even the last covid package you know um and i think that's what's really hurting the democrats uh with the two governor races even though it looks like the the democrat did retain his spot in new jersey after all we were talking about again earlier in the week again this is a big wake-up call for him the only other party that competes (laughs) Got, got a decent got a decent amount of votes and he right. needs to really he really needs to clean up his shit and get on his a game for this next two years or he might get voted out by the only other party like you know, they, they act like this is like a fucking blind side like out of nowhere kind of thing you're all wait what what's going on right. the republicans getting some votes like, and, and it's it's incredible news that <laughs> a republican won the governor the governorship in virginia for the first time in the last two terms yeah <laughs> it's right yeah it's like historically a red area and then it went blue for a little while but now it's back red again you know i think it is what it is but you're absolutely right that's that's really the interesting thing about 2020 i think everybody knows it and i think during 2020 people are so fired up that they kind of bury the the obvious reality that we're not voting for biden um and i say that as i step outside of myself because i didn't vote for biden but it's like we're not voting for Biden because he he's the guy. He is just the guy that puts Trump out of business, right? So we're voting for Biden because we're very passionate about getting Trump out of office. Mm-hmm. And we think and we think Biden's got the best chance. Now, once they make that happen, though, then they realize 
Biden's like 78, 79 years old and can barely form sentences and fall asleep. He falls asleep at fucking big summits and shit like that. I was like, this is not a long-term strategy for success. It's crazy. Cause now it's kind of like, they're sitting there like, fuck, what do we do now? President Kamala Harris doesn't have a good ring to it to any Democrat either. So they're kind of in between a rock and a hard place right now too. So it's interesting. Yeah. It, and it will be interesting as the campaign season, like, uh, ramps up I, I really have a sneaking suspicion personally that trump's not going to run um he's getting the Santa's old. baby he's getting pretty old himself but um he has he's not going to say he's not going to run because he's getting campaign contributions that he can then pay himself or his family or whatever as long as he pays income tax on it it's free money for him and that's the most successful business venture he's ever had right it is just getting people's money for for running so i think coming up here probably in late 2022 next year he'll probably announce that he's not going to run i mean maybe he will i don't know but he's he's going to be like 80 years old by the time the next election is going to go down i just don't think it's going to happen for him but um i don't think he's going to announce it until he squeezed all the the profitability out of uh, getting the campaign contributions that he possibly can i mean would you if you're getting like 20 million dollars a month well, and I no, I would not. And also, <laughs> if I also if I also had a lot of like litigation that I would still be going through right now, civilly, um, I, I would probably want that money even more because he's got to pay his high priced lawyer team right now, too. He's still in a lot of hot water. So I'm sure the retainer alone is like twenty million dollars. Right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And a annual. piece and a piece of his rug. They got to take some of his hair, too, as collateral. That's what I heard anyways. So, you know, anyways. <laughs> so, yeah, um. The it's been a lot of uh, headlines in the news with you know the governors of, of Virginia and New Jersey, but in the end, I don't think any of that really matters, and I don't think it's really newsworthy. No. I think there's just not a lot of news going on right now, uh, in general. Um, so they're just kind of latching onto that because that's the only sort of divisiveness that can be kind of construed from the left or right media, uh, with those two governors. Because honestly, dude. Nothing quite sells media like political media during the campaign season. So I really mm -hmm. feel like the news, uh, the, the media is on the left and the right are really trying to keep an ongoing campaign season feel to, to really sell their news. Sweeps, baby. That's what it's like for them. You know what I mean? Or it's like, <laughs> but it, it, you know, it is interesting because you, you had mentioned it earlier. We didn't really spend much time at it at all yet, but um, the bipartisan uh, infrastructure bill passed. What was it last night or the night before? I can't remember, but it passed, which, yeah. which again, I haven't done. And admittedly, so I haven't done a deep dive on the details of this bill, but I do know that what was passed was stripped down from a wish list of, I think 1.8 trillion down to 1 trillion. So there's like, what is that? I'm no Andrew Lang or anything, but that's like eight, eight, 800 billion. Eight billion? Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> some, some astronomical number that was trimmed down to get the votes to pass it, which again, kind of shows you that there's not a lot of support. There's not too much support for what Biden's trying to do. Um, if they have to, if they have to compromise that much, but it's passed here we are. Apparently this is just a very small part of the overall infrastructure grand plan, but I'm not sure what's in this bill, Bob. Do you have any insight here? Have you done any uh, research? Yeah, so so it's a 1.2 trillion bipartisan infrastructure bill, right? So mm -hmm. it passed, you know, fairly normally in the Senate without, you know, any sort of shenanigans with the supermajority, and then it passed in the House two nights ago. Uh, this is a normal run-of-the-mill infrastructure bill, as you've seen over the last 40 years. Um, it's let's clean up the roads, uh, make sure the bridges are good, electrical grid, infrastructure, water, and fucking railways. railways are they right? building a lot more charging stations for for EVs? That's all I really need to know here because I don't see enough charging Not stations. Not the government, for... but I'm sure Dr. Evil will. Yeah, they need to. I mean, either, you know... Uh... When you say that, are you talking about our boy from Amazon? Yes. Okay. I, I know that uh, Bezos looks like him, but you know, um, I think Elon now is like twice as rich as Jeff Bezos. So, um, e Elon, e Elon is he has passed uh, Rockefeller as the richest person ever to exist on the planet in like written history. I'll tell you what, I'm that's, enjoying. That's where he's at. I'm enjoying shares of Tesla right now too. That's all I'm saying. You know, I, I can't uh, wait until he's a, the first trillionaire and he like buys a country. 
<laughs> well, what he what he needs to do is when he gets that kind of loot, he just needs to buy Mars. You know, that way he has rights to Mars. Because I who? think that's I think it's whoever gets there first, right? Oh, that's why. That's why they're so. Yeah, he's I gonna guess, get there and start putting little flags up and old Elon school flags. style. There you go. So, uh, yeah, that's that's really where it's at. The, the new infrastructure bill that the Dems are trying to pass off for reconciliation uh, is basically like Biden's agenda again with the campaign promises that probably can't get fulfilled, right? Because I just don't think that they're gonna have even all the Democratic votes that they're gonna need to even put this under reconciliation. Um, so they're going to, the new bill has, uh, subsidized, um, childcare up until your child is six. Mm -hmm. So, so that way, you know, people can afford that, which is actually a pretty good thing. Um, it's going to have like a, a, a month or six weeks or something of paid, uh, family leave, uh, when your child is born. So for paternal leave or maternity leave, either one, um, that's in the bill. Uh, there's a couple of more more uh, items on the agenda that uh, have been pushed by the, the Dems and uh, trying to remember off the top of my head. Did you pull it up? I was just pulling up kind of like the the key moderate Democrat that keeps shutting shit down from the um, from 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 everything getting done is Joe Manchin, the guy from West oh, yeah. Virginia. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. He's the one handling business over there. God yeah, bless. He's, he's God invested bless in his son's coal company. Yeah, yeah. God, <laughs> God, God bless him for being around because you know he he is he is definitely the thorn in the side of the uh, the progressive left right now for for whatever reason, Bob. I want to say it's just you know he's just a wholehearted, just good guy and just you know stands by his morals. <laughs> I, I'm not sure. I I, I jest, but. Um, He's a politician, no, I, so we doubt that. Yeah, you know, it's just tough time. I don't know, man. I, I just don't know. So so there's a lot of that going down. And uh, I don't think that I don't think it's going to pass. I just don't think it's going to pass. Uh, we'll see. Um, but there's a reason it hasn't been voted on. Right. Nancy Pelosi won't bring something to the floor unless she already has the votes. I, I, I can't recall the last time that she actually brought a bill to the floor that didn't pass. Yeah. It's just not her thing. Uh, and that's smart. Mitch McConnell won't do it either. Right. He just won't bring it if it's not going to pass. What's the point? You know, yeah, uh, that's just so, a lot of work for nothing. You and it makes I mean? you look like shit as the leader. Yeah, right? it does. Like it you really don't have does. your house in order. So so mm -hmm. I, I don't think it'll pass. It hasn't been put to a vote yet. And I'm pretty sure that's because she doesn't have the votes. Mm -hmm. So so we'll see. And now they are working on the uh, the filibuster, which I think you and I kind of both like. So kids back in the day, you probably don't know this. Some of you older guys do uh, guys and girls. Um Back there in the, the filibuster, we were taught in uh, in civics that the filibuster is literally a bunch of old guys doing some marathon debating on the House floor to prevent a bill being passed by the time, like, say, Congress breaks for, you know, one of their many vacations over the year. Yes, right? literally the midnight oil terminology. You know what I mean? Keeping that shit going. It's like right. stall, stall them, just stall them. <laughs> they like would take turns like three or four senators a day would go pull like five hour shifts. You know, and they'd, they'd sit there. The math isn't out of that six hour shifts. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they would sit there and literally just talk a bunch of fucking nonsense, holding the floor and then passing it off and, and conceding their time. Because when uh, a bill is up for debate before it goes to vote, you have unlimited time to argue your your point before the vote. And that still that still exists. And that's still how it is. But several years ago, I'd say like 10, 15 years ago, they just decided, let's not do that. Let's just say, like, if we vote and say that we're going to filibuster it, then it's just filibuster. And you need a supermajority to pass anything. Well, that's not exactly how the Constitution was written and not the intent of it and, and, and how it is. It's because senators don't like to stay up there for six, seven, eight, nine, ten hours. I remember one time, I think it was Kennedy that sat up there for like a marathon, like 15 hours one time. <laughs> Just mm. talking nonsense to get this bill to the, the the deadline so that it couldn't be voted on. And that's actually when the people you vote for are earning their money. So yes, they're well, actually they gotta go have ahead, some go endurance. Ahead. No, they have to have some endurance. They gotta they gotta have some, you know, again, they gotta get out there and play the game. You know what I mean? They can't just be empty, just empty vessels sitting there, like, oh, you voted me in. I'm just gonna sit here now. No, it actually it's um, I think they should like primetime televise it and like get this going again, like every, every couple of weeks, almost like a football season. That's just me. You know what I mean? Like, what are they going to be arguing about now 
and then fuck C-SPAN. Let's put it on like prime time, like Fox or, or NBC. That's what I'm saying. I think they should add a physical endurance activity to the filibuster as well. So while they're sure. arguing their point, they have to like hold a five pound weight up. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> what, the, what they have to do is they have, they, have, up. they have to spin around 10 times with a, with a baseball bat on the ground on their head, you know, and get all dizzy and then run to like another <laughs> objective and get that. <laughs> Make it all so, ridiculous. So the Democrats are, are considering changing the filibuster back while they have control of the Senate. Now, again, will Maintain and Kristen Cinema go along with that? I don't know. It's, yeah. it's really tough to say. Uh, I but I do, I do think that the filibuster, if it even exists, it should go back the way it was. And our senators and our congressmen should have to fucking earn their money and go actually put in work and not just sit up there and, and Joe Biden it at a G20, you know? Oh my God. I'll tell you what, man. Did you, did you get to watch it? Cause I sent you that video on TikTok of, <laughs> yeah. of Michael Rappaport. He's like big Joey. He's like, Lord, he's like, he's out there. He's like, oh, Joe, don't do it. Don't do it. Joe. And he just starts dozing off. And that dude comes and wakes him up. That's a, can you, it's legit. Can you imagine his dude, just his team, bro. Like in general, especially like who's his, his publicist or whatever. Like the people that are there to like control his image. They're like, Ah, fuck. Look, he's on national, like, no, global television right now. I was like, he's falling asleep. Somebody go wake his fucking ass up. This is bad. They've got to have like a remote zapper or something. The batteries <laughs> died on or something. They're like, guys, guys, the zapper's not working. The zapper's not working. Fucking dude, he's sleepy, good. Joe. It's dude. It's one. Of, it's one of Elon's fucking Euralinks. It's a. It's a beta type that they got and Joe already installed. It just hit a little fucking button. Wake up, Joe. You're on. Dude, yeah, it's, it's like just... a dog shot collar that they like attached to his thighs. I was just, oh yeah, I'm, oh I'm up. my god! <laughs> it that starts is... beeping when his pulse gets too low, like he's going to sleep. It starts beeping. <laughs> it's got. It's got like implanted like um what are defibrillators or whatever to fucking shock him away. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Joe. He's flatlining. Get him back. He's at the summit. Come on, wake him up. Ah, but anyways, I, I, I pivot just a little bit here. Something else we wanted to talk about. Green lighted. Now, it's for emergency use, but green light now, the vaccine, Pfizer. Pfizer's the only one right now, but green light, that bad boy, five and 11 years old. What are your thoughts, Bob? I'm all for it. I mean, at this point, I've, 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 I've done it. Um. Uh, my me and my wife have done it and I don't, I don't care what you say aaron Rodgers. i'm all for the vaccine i just got my booster the other day and with until i got that booster booster my gills were uneven yeah that booster really cleared the left one up and opened it up so now mm -hmm. i really can like swim better yeah for longer and your skin's getting better. a little bit a little bit more reptilian you know what i mean because it was getting a little dry you know yeah, from... and in this high altitude and dry i, I need that protection against yeah. the sun no. So, so I'm all about it. Um, I've seen about what it's going to do, uh, you know, to, to at least our family genetically. So I, I have an expectation of what it will do, you know, to our kids. Um, so I'm not too concerned about it. Um, at this point, the vaccine's been around for quite a quite a while. Um, yeah. Any any long term effects, um, especially from the people that did the trials? I mean, that was already like two years ago. So. Uh, you would you would be like seeing it all from now. Um, I I think it's good. I'm ready for these kids to be able to like at least in elementary school to take their fucking masks off and go have a normal life at least at school. You know, if we still have to mask up when we go other places or whatever, because we know there's a, a high percentage of anti-vaxxers or whatever that don't want it. And you go outside, you kind of have to be a little bit more careful. But we know in school, as soon as it's like finalized and done, they're going to require it like polio. And, and then those kids will have it. Well, the, the other side of that is my kids never gotten polio. And, God. This, and then they can have, you know, uh, at least for those eight hours a day, a normal life with each other at school. That's that's my thoughts on that. No, and I, I, I do agree with your sentiments there and where you're going. My, my thing is this. Um, I will be honest. I am a little hesitant. I'm a little worried about side effects to my child versus me. I, for some reason, I just don't care as much about me. I'm already a grown ass man. But that, that does make me a little apprehensive, only that it's an emergency status. I wish that it already had the seal of approval for, from the FDA right now so I could what sue them if something happened to my daughter, which I can't do now. That's like the only difference. But the only concern I really have is if it allows them to take their mask off. And the only reason I say that is because I look at what happened to adults. We are still required to wear a mask, even if we're vaccinated in a lot of respects, almost like it didn't change the game. I, I know that's because there's still a, a heavy 
I wouldn't say heavy, but there's still a big enough faction of people that are anti-vaxxers and unvaccinated that you have to. But that's my only concern is they do it and then they still don't get to take off the mask. And for kids that are like, you know, maturing at, at an exponential level socially and whatnot at that young age, it'd be interesting and, and a real shitty situation to me if that was the case. And I see that potentially happening. And that's the only thing that worries me is you tell the kids, especially I, I don't tell you, but my, my daughter is deathly afraid of needles, just uh, like a lot of other little kids. Right. She's like, I don't want to get the vaccine because I hate needles. Honey, I get it. She just got her flu shot like last week, I believe before, you know, whatever she's not. And she's got all her, her other shots for vaccines or whatever that you need to get as just per going into public school. Um, but that's the only thing that would upset me is she would do it because me and Jamie would want her to, and she understands the end result, but they need more than we do. They need some kind of reward for doing it in my mind so i would say like they would I, I would have to say the school districts and the school the schools as a whole should understand that and say hey look if we're gonna make all the kids do this we should let them take off their fucking mask regardless of what happens just because you know they're gonna remember this if it doesn't go that way and they're they're gonna this is gonna be the first of maybe many where they do not trust the government or have trust in and what we're telling them either so i i am a little concerned about that well i think that you're right. It, they're not going to be able to take their masks off until it's out of emergency status. Mm-hmm. Um, once it's uh, in like normal approval status, then they'll they'll you know they'll they'll push it to the schools and mandate it, and yeah. then that'll be that. And at that point, you'll have the whole all right. Well, you now have to go home until you come back with this vaccine, right? Um, and then hopefully, uh, if everything has been going according to plan for the last year. Um, I'm guessing probably around February or so um, they would get that status, kind of like the differences of the last few. Um, they've, they've, they're about four months behind the, the first batch there. So hopefully hopefully around the end they'll, they'll get that status. And then once it's there, we've talked about it on the show, I have no problem with the schools adding another vaccine to the required list of their many fucking dozen vaccines that they require. It's just one more. I, I don't really care. As long as, like you said, as long as then everyone has to get it and then they can go and have a normal life at school. Yeah, that's that's what I'm cool with. And again, I'm just being honest here. I am. I worry more about my daughter, even sometimes when it's irrational. I have worry and concern versus myself and me and Jamie. You know what I mean? For some reason, to jump on the grenade as an adult, I was like, we just got to do this. And now I'm like, well, yeah, I guess, you know, uh, it just makes me a little bit nervous. I'm not going to lie. We got to worry about your kids, man. They haven't made their mistakes. Like for us, <laughs> for true. us, we get something bad happens to us. We're like, well, you I think back, I probably had that coming. Yeah. <laughs> so if yeah. I think hard enough, I probably deserve this. But with the kids, they, they you know, they're just starting out. It, no. It's all on us to, to do what we can for them. But, and you're absolutely right. I, I, I need to say this. It's all about the kids. You know what I mean? At the it end is, of the day, it we is really, it's all about the kids. Yeah. We haven't said that in a while, but I, I'm, I'll leave you with this, Bob. And, and I think this is a good time for us to maybe looking at winding this one down for the, for the, uh, the duration here. There's a lot of kids out there that have bigger balls about taking the vaccine than Aaron Rodgers. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. Or just in general. <laughs> <laughs> all right well what a show uh it's so nice to be back Uh, i've got a cowboy game to get to i've got to watch them handle the broncos like nobody's business oh god you know i hope they do too because i'm i am just salty about the game i went to last weekend i'll tell you that but we all know if anybody saw washington football team took a nosedive we're just a we are in a downward spiral and i'm not going to talk about it anymore because i'm just going to get upset so go ahead bob well, thanks everyone for joining us. Um, you can hit us up on Patreon. In fact, um, I just added a new weird short film that I had to do for school. It's on the short and stiff. You're welcome to oh. go check that out. Uh, it's a weird macabre kind of a short, but I got a good grade on it. That's what counts. Mm, uh, we love that. <laughs> other than that, uh, thank you for listening. Uh, again, uh, hit us up on, on Patreon. Uh, uh, Mike, we still hope you get better. I know you're still getting through it over there from the car wreck anyone wants to help out with that there's a gofundme just uh, hit us up Uh, and other than that that is it um we'll see you next week take care guys